I wanted to walk you through some basic testing of EDR. I've done a lot of testing over the last few years, both with this incident response and with testing new EDR packages that uh, companies have brought to me trying to sell me on their EDR. So what I've learned is that most EDR really functions almost the same and has about the same effectiveness. I don't know if it's because they're using some shared technology or not. There are different feature sets between them, but those aren't usually what I'm testing. So in the past, I've done tests where we've uh, created a lab environment in VMware or in Azure and uh, set up a couple boxes, put this EDR solution on it, deployed ransomware, deployed other malware like Emotet, and uh, did a pen test against it also and see if it what was what it was affected at stopping. Most recently, I did a test against Sentinel One, Windows Defender, and another um, program in Azure. And I would show you, but for some reason, I don't have access to that subscription right now. So I can't pull it up at the moment for this video. But I do have some screenshots I had taken during my test. So Sentinel One, caught everything that I ran um, live as soon as I started running it. So Conti, it stopped. Black, Black Basta, it stopped. Uh, Imitet, it stopped. Every variety that I tried to execute, it stopped as soon as I tried to execute it. It did not identify it until it executed. That's one thing about Sentinel One. It's not, in general, it's not, um, you know, using a ton of resources on your system because it's only executing when you execute something. Now there are different modules of Sentinel One, different licensed versions. You can have it with, you know, a, you can use it as a next gen AV and EDR as well. And there's Ranger, um, there's other components too. But I was just t testing basic EDR capability against ransomware. And it stopped everything effectively as soon as I started to execute it. Uh, incidentally, I had Red Canary connected to my Sentinel-1 instance. So Red Canary gave me amazing reporting afterwards, detailing the threat, etc. Windows Defender. I can't tell if Windows Defender was going to be a great EDR or not, because it nuked the file immediately as soon as it hit the, the file system every time. So I think the only way to test Windows Defender effectively would be to um, really give it something new that it doesn't have a record of because what i was experiencing was really next gen av um capabilities rather than edr so av capabilities the, the file hit the file system it recognized the signature of the file as being something malicious and deleted it immediately so i never got a chance to execute it on Windows Defender. So I don't know how Windows Defender actually would have acted against execution. And the third one that I ran uh, ended up with a completely 100% encrypted file system. It didn't catch the threat at all. And uh, yeah, so I can share a screen here and share show you what that looked like. Uh, here we go. So I executed the ransomware and it created the ransomware readme file in every folder. Did the whole encryption thing, encrypted what it could. 
encrypted everything here, put it encrypted at the end. Yeah. And this was the Black Blast uh, um, ransomware. And it, it was not effective at catching anything, the, the, this endpoint solution. I want to show you guys where I got this so that you can replicate it kind of yourself. So vxunderground.org, vx-underground.org. They have a great Twitter channel. I follow them. It's cool when they upload stuff. Well, let's go back to vx-underground.org and they have samples. It is a sample library. So it has pretty much everything in it. It has, I mean, not everything. There's a lot of stuff that's not in here, but Black Basta, that's what I just ran. Black Cat Ransomware, I saw that one earlier in the year. Um, let's see here. Cobalt Strike, which is used on almost every attack from our evil, Conti, etc. Um, Conti. Cuba Ransomware. Dark Side. And they have other stuff other than Ransomware. They have Rats. You know, they have Emotet, and Emotet has a ton of versions here also. It's been around for a long time. If we go into like the Conti ransomware, there's a ton of different compiled versions. Now these are all 7-zipped, so you're gonna have to go and download 7-zip. I go to Ninite, download 7-zip, and install it, and then the file is actually encrypted. So the decryption key is infected. It's lowercase I-N-F-E-C-T-E-D. But this library has a ton of stuff. So, and there's no directions on how to use anything. They figure that you'll look up what you need to look up. But uh, Quackbot, see that all the time. And I see our evil there, our evil. Yep. Anyway, lots of stuff. And let me see here. Drydex. Yep. So yeah, tons of ransomware, tons of malware, tons of stuff to throw at. Um, the machine. So my way of testing was to, uh, you know, turn off Defender on the one with, uh, you know, with Sentinel-1 and just have Sentinel-1 do it. Test. Sentinel-1 caught everything at execution. Um, Windows Defender caught everything as soon as I downloaded it. Um, never got to execute it. And this third thing let ransomware run unrestricted so you can test you know do a very low high level test of um you know edr vendors when they come to you trend micro cyber and crowdstrike etc now most edr is gonna be successful in catching the stuff uh so let's talk about what edr actually is because there's a lot of different opinions about what EDR should do. Um, so EDR, Endpoint Detection Response, is a tool that's usually meant for catching threats as they're happening. So I guess some of the things that you know EDR is expected to do is detect threats, um, help with response, give response threat capabilities, like quarantining a file, blocking network traffic, isolating a host, shutting down a process, etc. Um, EDR is expected to help with investigation and remediation. Most EDR has like forensic components in it, where it has can build a timeline, can collect uh, forensic components, can sh forensic artifacts, can show you 
you know, attack vectors and how the attack moved through the network, that kind of thing. Uh, forensics abilities, some of them will let you take a lot of forensic data from them. And then automatic response, um, you know, certain types of threats, playbooks, things like that. That's what EDR usually does. So my expectation of any EDR is that in those response capabilities, it quarantines box network traffic, shuts down processes, stuff like that automatically. I shouldn't have to tell an EDR to do that. Some EDR that I've tested has that capability in it, but if you don't tell it to quarantine a file, or if you don't tell it to block network traffic and isolate a host, it won't. Where by default, stuff like CrowdStrike and Sentinel-1 will stop a threat. With other EDR platforms, they might just raise an alert. And then your SOC has to decide whether to stop a threat or if there's a playbook in place, they'll, they'll stop the threat. So that is is really you know, a difference in my mindset of EDR. My mindset of EDR is I expect it to stop the threat. Yes, raise an alert, give our SOC something to look at, but, um, you know, stop the threat from happening first. Um, if it needs to be allowed, we'll make an allowance later. You know, I'd rather st default to stopping it. But uh, yeah, EDR, other ways. So I tested it with live ransomware and malware. Um, something that you can do also is pen test, which I've done before. Had a pen tester, a pen test machine, and then we'll see if all, some of the tools they used in pen testing get stopped. Um, doing malware injection, um, you know, besides just downloading it like I did, trying other stuff, running file list malware, etc. Um, so then you're looking at it's looking at memory and and process, not you know a file that was put on this file system. Uh, vulnerability scanning, um, you know, a lot of times if you run a vulnerability scan, the EDR uh, may respond or it may, may at least identify that it's being scanned. Um, and log analysis, um, looking at EDR's log and see what it's actually doing and, and how it's responding to threats. So those are ways of testing EDR. What I do, what I was looking for in this test wasn't for forensic capability. Although I have done tests looking for forensic capability and I do uh, prefer certain EDRs to others as far as uh, what information it's getting me. But on this one, I just wanted to confirm that the endpoint solutions were actually stopping the threats. And out of the three that I tested, one wasn't. You know, it was raising all kinds of alerts in its dashboard but it was not configured to stop threats automatically. That's something to watch out for and uh, to verify when you're when you're doing a proof of concept for an EDR vendor before you sign an agreement. You know, make sure that it, it's set up the way it needs to be set up. You know, and do a proof of concept with them. All right. Thank you so much, and if you have any comments, feel free to comment.